All right. Look at that. Perfect and flawless. How's it going? As always, it's Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern time, which means it's time for RCS Live. I am, of course, Nate Mumford, joined here by John Beno, Assistant G Selector, Product Manager. Hello, John. How's it going? Hello, Nate. Good morning. Welcome to our fun little party here. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been actually a couple of months, right? Yeah, something like yeah. that. We're really excited to have you on here because hey. today we're going to talk about everything G Selector. And yes, we were just joking. same shirts today. Yeah, we're like we're brothers. The same exact shirt today. <laughs> I swear this was not planned. Uh, I actually was going to wear this shirt on Sunday. I decided not to, and I went to brunch with a friend of mine who wore the same exact shirt. So I was like, ah, now it's safe to do this. There's no way John's going to wear the same exact shirt as me, <laughs> and that's not the case. Uh, so, John, as usual, uh, we do have our chat up here. So if you want to check in on any of your uh, streaming uh, services, as for example, you can be just like uh, Alexis here and say hello. Hello, Alexis. Or Axis. Axis, I should say. Sorry, I thought there was Axis. an L there. Uh, v, how's it going? Thank you for checking in as well. So we are live now on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Periscope, um, and all other good stuff too as well. As always, you can check out previous videos on our archive over at rcsworks.com slash rcs-live, or just go to the blog. Uh, every week we do a write-up here, and we essentially talk about some of the things. Um, we recap the video, uh, detailed some of those descriptions in the video where you can find some of those settings as well. Again, saving you time, so if there's a previous video that you wanted to watch, but maybe you don't know if it pertains to your situation or not, you can essentially check out the blog, read the write-up, pertains to you, check out the video. And finally, just a little bit of RCS housekeeping to get out of the way. It's my favorite pun every week, John. Don't oh, forget, yeah. check your backup paths. Remember, data exchanges, they're free. They're part of your contract. Send yourself a data exchange. And we're also always looking for beta testers for Zeta right now, 5.21.1. That is the um, enhanced version from 5.20.1. Very powerful, fun and uh, really, really cool stuff in that version as well. So uh, now we got that out of the way, John. I thought we have your screen over here. Um, yeah. And I, yeah. And I just been checking here. So like Mina, uh, Manon, if you have any questions, feel free to chime in. I have my uh, chat going over here as well. And so uh, we'll answer your questions live in real time. And I thought we'd throw it over to John. And I want to essentially talk about um, you know some of John's scheduling techniques, right? Because you know, one of the things we say here at RCS is we're not technically consultants. We have, of course, programming experience. There are things that we do and things that we like. But, of course, everybody's station is different with different types of uh, requirements. And it's all based on your music philosophy. So I thought that we would bring John in here and talk about John's music philosophy. Right? John's music philosophy. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So so you are right. Like uh, that's that's the amazing thing with RCS, and that's like it's the best part of working in RCS. We're working in RCS, but still we are still people coming from the radio. You know, we're, most of us we are programmers, you know, foreign programmers, from music directors, people that put like our hands inside the, the work of music scheduling or engineering when it comes to Zeta, or even we have people from traffic departments when it comes to Acquira. That means we, we know somehow what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to talk today? Uh, we receive many questions in support. Like sometimes I, I talk with support people, like, how do I do that? Like why this uh, song gets unscheduled? Like, uh, you know, the, the typical problem, we put too many rules at the same place to get like some results. But we end up getting so many unscheduled positions that we actually lose our mind. You know, it's the typical, mm -hmm. like I add more to make it better. But my my philosophy, Nate, it's less is better. The less mm -hmm. rules you give, the better it does. Of course, not with any kind of software, but with G Selector, because with G Selector, we support, of course, like we are like the traditional software that you put all the rules, you make it fancy and it schedules, but we also have the goals. What is goals? Goals is that actually, let's say that G Selector can see the big picture of your database. So it can see like how many songs you have in the category, how many attributes you have in the song, and how much of the clock requests you have, and then try to suggest what we call natural demand. 
That means based on what is inside your library, it will try to spread everything. I'll give you an example. Let's say we have only 10 songs in the database, okay? Not more than 10. And five of the songs are pop, five of them are rock. It will try to spread the hour by playing one pop, one rock, one pop, one rock in order to give you the best, you know, what we call in the radio consistency on your schedule. Try to give you the best consistency. But mm -hmm. it doesn't stop there. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I will give you an example here of a typical database that it's i mean it's not so typical i mean the typical database have like a b c's have like all this all the categories but one of the questions one actually of the typical strategies of the radio is that how do i separate my songs it's very simple the powers and the secondaries like my powers the songs are skyrock secondaries are not so good songs so what we typically do on the clock power secondary power secondary we end up like especially in a very tight format like a hot ac or chr we end up I don't know how many clocks and I don't know how many grids in order to make sure that your listener doesn't always know that at 3 p.m. you're going to start the same song every two days. So an example I have here, it's one of our demo databases. Like I have a classic rock format that I have two categories. I have my A and my N. It's like A's are the good songs, N are the bad songs. And what we typically do, as I mentioned before, we make a clock with A's and N's. But what I would do if I was like, uh, if I were about to do this job, I will say, okay, why should I play this game and have to always create a clock and predict everything and set rules and everything? And why not dump everything in one category? So I will take my example here and then I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to separate this stuff. So if you see here, I have my A's are my power song, my best songs, and mm -hmm. my knees are my so secondary. so songs secondary yeah, songs secondary. so usually we say i want to play i don't want to play for example secondary oh, yeah, no, no. back to yeah. back you know we need to be careful how we play whatever yeah so what i will gonna do something that most people will say whoa what are you doing there is like i'm gonna select all of my songs in this category with my control a i selected 43 songs i'm gonna go to multi-song changer and first of all i'm gonna move all of my songs in the same category as my power songs. Then you're going to ask me, John, how do you know the song is power? So here is the trick. We have many, many ways to, to, to mark a song as a power or a secondary. If you receive research from, uh, from a company like uh, Radio Music or like Media, Mon Media Base, like we have so many options. You, I don't know what kind of research you run, but you have many options to import your research. You could, mm -hmm. uh, you could give attributes on the songs automatically based on the research. But let's say that you don't research. You just want to mark the songs like I do right now. I have no research. I'm just the crazy guy thinks that those 43 songs are the secondary. I can just use something I really like. It's called content. So I can go here and create a new content and say that those songs are my secondary songs. I assign to the songs 43 songs. So I said that my 43 secondaries, I send them to A1 and uh, I mark them as secondary. Great. And just to recap here, we're hitting that. So what we're doing here is we're talking about kind of content and goal scheduling, right? The idea is that we goal have scheduling. Selector sees everything and you're letting G Selector do the heavy lifting, telling you exactly. Exactly. Everything. And we'll talk about why this is better than regular scheduling in my mind, of course. Like yeah, absolutely. It's, it's like my, we're here. My, my brain. <laughs> 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 Just let, like we need to give like a heads up. I'm not trying to go to tell everyone how should you use, do the job, but it's just a different way of scheduling that is unique. Only G selector can do this kind of scheduling. And by no the way, else. yeah. And by the way, John, what I've noticed a lot with doing these videos, especially talking to you, if I would go back to be a program director with what I know here at RCS, I would take things here and there. And just, you know, for example, like I might take this, it wouldn't work for my currents, let's say, but for my gold based or recurrence, I might apply this. Right? There, are many, so, there are many ideas. Let's do the hard one. Like this is like really the excessive scenario that we have no categories at all. Like we gotcha. dumped okay. all of our categories. We're going to talk about that. Just trans a little bit for the for the U.S. market, at least. I feel like treat this as again. This could be your goal based categories, your recurring categories. I know for me personally, I always have. Let's say when I break down what kind of type it is. So recurrence, let's say 
I had a power recurring category, a primary recurring category, and a secondary recur recurring yeah. category. So we could take this practice by way and apply it to not your entire database, but just you know some of those categories. But yeah, let's go ahead and do the advanced. We stuff, have so many that, examples. Let's talk about the yeah. the other example. Let's stay on that one for now. Like let's okay. go on the excessive way and let's talk Absolutely, about another. Yeah. I have another example. Okay, so now you say, John, what have you done? You dumped everything in one category. Yeah. Uh, so right now I've marked my secondaries. Let's go mark also my power, my primary mm -hmm. category. So those are my not coded. That coded that means those songs are. The primary, let's do it fast. Uh, I'm sorry I'm too fast, but I'm trying to save some time from uh, uh, Mr. Manford. So those are going to be my primary songs. And to translate here, here for you, John, I actually just wrote this. I'm, I'm, we're getting ready to revamp the uh, the G Selector Academy here, too, on the new version of G Selector. And this was what I did late last night, was everything what you're just doing <laughs> was describing here. So the <laughs> idea is that we take, again, with the multi-song changer, in the filter on the left-hand side, we're just isolating these elements here to essentially say these are the elements we have highlighted, and we're going to take these elements, carry them over to the multi-song changer, and apply those attributes. So now, as you can see, uh, Nate, I have 94 songs, classic rock. Ooh, I play <laughs> a lot of songs. <laughs> and you see all of them, they, have, they tell me which song is primary which song is secondary, and then I have some code, I have my BPMs, I have some themes uh, saying if there is an intro or not, this is another topic we're going to talk about another time. So if I go now on the clocks, this is where the fun starts. I will forget mm -hmm. all the clocks here. I'm going to create a main clock, a new one. Like, let's take it from scratch. Let's mm -hmm. say that I'm building my station. Oh, sorry, wrong button, guys. Like, I have, <laughs> uh, I yeah, you know, it happens some times clock element selection um i don't know why i think uh, from the first day I, I i i used rca software probably 20 years ago no mm -hmm. okay not 20 i'm not that old like 15 <laughs> years ago i can't make a clock without an etm on the top of the hour and suggesting everyone guys like you put your seat belt when you get in the car make sure you have an etm on your clock especially if you have zeta because things can get really complicated you know it's in my head I can save a clock without any there, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's there. I'm just laughing because last week, uh, Brian gave a very lengthy example about restaurants and cooking with Zeta. <laughs> now we got ETM and seatbelts. I just love, I love us radio people. We, the metaphors are delightful. Yeah, we're fun sometimes, not always. <laughs> so uh, first of all, these are brand new clock screen. We're going to talk about that maybe later if I have some time. But if only, I don't know, John, there was some type of archive place you can go to to see the video on 490 and the G-Selector clocks. If only there's something like that. We've done such a great work with the clocks you have no limitations maybe we have some time today about that now, Nate. so here i'm the crazy little scientist uh programmer that i dump all of my songs in one category mm -hmm. and now i have a clock that says a a a a a yeah yep. it sounds funny but trust me guys it can work pretty good so if you think about like what is your what is your target of programming like what do you want to do you say, I make a clock. Okay, uh, why I make the clock? What I need on my clock? You don't need to spa separate everything in categories. For example, when I, when I was programmer and I used like the selector 12, the DOS, I said, the first song has to be power. Mm -hmm. Always. Okay. Then you're going to ask me how you do that here. It's very simple. I create a clock constraint. The constraint is really, really powerful and will never, ever get violated. So, for example, I get, I'll say here, only power. Mm hmm and I say that my content, oh, sorry. Okay, my keyboard doesn't want to work. Uh, that, that, that one's just to see where the C section. Content, it's also the keyboard and my screen today, they refuse to co cooperate. So I'm going to say that my content has to be always primary, right? always. And by the way, this is really important to know because I feel like a lot of programmers don't, and, and me especially, by the way, I'll, I'm fully, you know, I'll admit to it. I always kept my clocks as, you know, structured based on position on what I want it to be. But the idea then that John's introducing here is use the clock structure to tell G Selector what you want to do, but at the attribute level, right? Not exactly. at the attribute level, the attribute level. Exactly. Because if you, I know, like I have heard complaints. I, it was also my big complaint as a programmer. That's why I had probably 200 clocks. 
like I don't know how many clocks I had because the thing is that I will, I didn't like the listener to be able to predict what I'm gonna play. You know, you cannot play only with one clock. Your listener will always predict what you're gonna mm -hmm. do. So leaving G selector free, you're gonna get a floating clock, a clock that is unpredictable but will still keep your rules. It will still keep your strategy. So let's say here, for example, strategies that I, I never want to play two secondary songs back to back. And I also want to spread my spread my the years of the song. I don't want to play 70s all the time or 80s all the time. I want to be able to to have like a consistency and have also kind of a shuffling of the era and the energy and the tempo. So, but I say that my first rule, the first song should be always a song that scores 100 on my research. Mm -hmm. And this is what we do here. I just create a constraint that the song has to be only power. You know, some people may say that the first song has to be always a power, has to always has energy five and a tempo five. That's still fine. I can say, I can create a brand new constraint and say, this is like my top song. And I can add some more stuff here. I can say, you know what? Okay. Uh, the content has to be always, has to be uh, equals always primary, has to be always a power song, but also the era, mm -hmm. the, the year of the song, uh, you know, I don't want to start my hour with a 70s song. Like, it sounds bad for my station. So I can take, I can even tell it shouldn't be a 70s or I can make it more strict and I can say, you know what? Uh, sorry, I switched to energy. I was about to go era. It's my mouse doesn't want to cooperate today, apparently, also. So I can say here that, you know what? My first song is going to be always from the golden age of uh, 80s to 85. Or I can say that it <laughs> can be... Or I can say that it's gonna be, you know what, 80s, 85, or uh, 85, 90s. Yeah, and John Dufer, go back to that match, drop down that match column for a second. I wanna show you there. This is, there's a lot of stuff here. And as I always say with G Selector, if you, your answer is four, is it one plus one plus one plus one equals four, two plus two equals four, three plus one equals four, or five minus one equals four? There's a lot of ways to get the same exact result. And this is a great window here because you can see there's equals, there's greater than, there's less than, a lot of flexibility here. And again, I you like. Can you know but, what I you know what I really like uh, on our software. I like the greater because one of the problems I had in the past uh, as a programmer is like, okay, I need energy three and up, so I had to go do energy three and energy four and energy five. But here I say that my first song should be always a happy song. So mm -hmm. please pick a song that is gonna be greater than three. Or something, yeah, or three, yeah. So right now I have created a very uh, very nice condition here it says that this song whatever is this constraint should be a primary song 80s and over 3. So if I click okay save go back to my definition come on I can now tell my system that what the only song should be a top song should be a song that happy 80s and primary so we resolved the first song problem because I know many people want to be able to control what songs plays on the top of the hour or after the commercial break. This is something you can really control from that screen. But then we go on the other thing, Nate, which is, hey, guys, how do I know? How do you control how many songs I'm playing where? I want to be it. sure that uh, I'm playing enough primary, enough secondary. Here we have a lot of ways to do that. So uh, first... If I go on my goals and balance, here actually it's the main screen, it's the heart of G-Selector that can actually fine tune the station. This is a screen that many people don't know how to use because they go you know, with the regular rules and just set minimum separation everywhere and day out of day parts, day out of type, type, days out of hour. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> and this is like actually fine tuning your station guys you can really do whatever you have in your crazy mind so let's say um my example here uh the first thing i want to control is how many primary songs and how many secondary songs i play so you can see here i can set a limit i'm sorry for my my graphics i'm a little bit blind so my screen is a bit uh <laughs> strange resolution I need to go to the IDAC at some point. So <laughs> here we have the option, again, either to let G selector decide or you decide. So the first thing you do when you open the screen, the system will tell you based on the song, songs we have and how many of them are primary and how many of them are secondary on this particular day part, it tells you that... Uh, the demand is high for the primary songs and not so high for the secondary, which is a little bit expected. And the turnover, it tells you it's about seven minutes for a primary song and 10 minutes for uh, a secondary song. 
So what you can do here, you can either let this selector play around. So you can tell, you know what? I want you always to play two more times a primary song than the secondary. And you see the values here are changing automatically. The more you're shifting a song, the more the values are changing. And also, you see on this screen here, it tells you also average how many pl uh, plays per hour you're going to have here. It tells you that if you leave everything like it is, probably you're going to have around eight songs that are primary and around five that are secondary. Even the demand is a quick little percentage to tell you, hey, listen, if, you're, if your library is, un is weighted and, and biased, you can see right here, right? So if the idea is that, hey, I don't have enough primary songs. Let's say you, you, you listen to a music suite. We did a video on this, by the way, John, about like maybe a month ago. The idea is identifying transitions, right? And the idea yeah. that, hey, I didn't like this five song music sweep. Why didn't I like that five song music sweep? And you can look and say, well, there was enough primary songs. Okay, jump to your goals, balance, attributes. Exactly. Look at your content. Well, if you see that percentage there, do me a favor, John, go ahead and bump up that secondary by like a bunch, just so you can see. Okay, like, all right, here's, we're doing life is good, right? And you can see here, well, I have 90% versus 8% secondary yeah. versus primary. You know your library has an issue there. So you can either adjust the count or as John's doing here, adjust the shift. Exactly. Uh, something you need to tell the, more, the most important, natural demand, natural demand means that we look what is coded in the library. If the library is not coded properly, that means natural demand is not, you know, a person, it's still a system. So if yeah. something, for example, if like half of the songs of your song have no has no code, the system yeah. is not able to see the songs. Okay. This is really important. Uh, and, and I'm sure someone's going to ask the question, uh, what is calculated on the natural, natural demand? On the natural demand, we calculate... Uh, only the categories that are assigned on this specific grid. So if you have another grid with other categories, you have to switch to the other grid and the natural demand is going to change. Mm -hmm. This is very important. We calculate what is, on, what is on your library and from the library, which songs are assigned on which category. And uh, by the way, just so just to, if you're just ch chiming in live here, we got John Bono, assistant G selector, uh, product manager as well. So if you have any questions here, we have the chat open here. So uh, Siddhar, uh, Arletta, uh, Manon, if you have any, um, sorry, I butchered all your names there. But if you have any questions, feel free to chime in here too. Um, uh, McGart, how's that buffering, by the way? I'm looking on my end. It looks like it's good on my end, but if not, let me know. Um, hey, John, do me a favor, go to the library and just double click a song for one quick second. Sure. Um, one of the things I like to show here, which is a common question we get a lot, you reference the demand, right? The goals, balance, attributes based on the grid, based on the clock positions. If you look at your eyes, the top right where the day parts tab is in that place, that green checkbox there, you might see something in there with like a gray circle. That's because you have no clock requests for that element based on that category, that. right? I can, show, I can show that. That's, that's right, very you want simple. To show I don't want to uh, sure. attract you too much, but I know I was just uh, no, no, no. writing this so, so it's very simple. Look, you, like I have a category here. Uh, I, the simplest thing. Let me create a whole category. All of us, mm -hmm. we have a whole category which is assigned nowhere and has no song. So if I grab, if I go in my library, let's say like take this, the, this song here. I'm going to use my inline editor, which I like mm -hmm. it so much. You know, space it's bar my, control space bar. Yeah, exactly. So if I double click now, the song is that is in the Z category, but has no demand. It has no demand because it's not requested on any clock. In general, in general, for our audience, uh, Nate, let's say the trick that when you see a cycle, that means there is no adjustment. When you see the plus or the check, it's uh, checked. On you, when you see the X, is not checked. Uh, but when you see a cycle, that means it means like neutral, nothing. Yeah, is not it's, selected. It's no or is not assigned. Yep. That's what the cycle means. So if you see something like that, that means uh, either the category is not requested, or either you have a wrong uh, clock grid assignment or something else. But definitely when you see that, that means there is no demand. We don't request this song anywhere. Yeah. Okay. So let's go, let's go back to our um, let's go back to our clocks here. And just to review, what we're doing here is we're talking about goal-based scheduling. Doing, uh, letting G select do the heavy lifting. So what John's done so far is he's taken all the songs, put it in one category, defined them as content, primary, content, secondary. He's created a constraint right now saying the first song in the hour has to meet these attribute constraints. So go ahead. Great. Uh, so 
I'm gonna st I'm gonna go back to the goals because this is where all the magic happens. So I'm gonna cr I'm gonna just take things out of my head and I say, you know what? Uh, the most important for me right now is to to wait. What is a primary song and secondary song? So if I go balance attributes, uh, okay. So here I have my album. I expand everything. I have my primary and secondary. Uh, if you ask me, I like how it looks. But probably someone's gonna say, you know what? Uh, I want to make sure that I don't play more than four secondary songs per hour because I don't like them. I want to play more primary songs. You have still the option. You can still limit how many uh, how many maximum uh, times this attribute, this song with this attribute, is gonna play. Here, it's also a very tricky part uh, because make sure that you don't give too much restrictions. Because if you start restricting everything, nothing's gonna play. You know. It's Yep, basically. Exactly, it's math. And don't forget that all the changes you do here, it's per day part. That means, for example, I can say that my overnight, I don't care, you know, I can say that my overnight, I want to relax the system and play whatever you want. Or even I can say that, for example, my, my midday drive, I can completely block my secondary songs. I want to play only the best songs because it's a drive time or it's whatever, and I want to make sure that I play only the best of the best songs. You have a talk morning show. Uh, you're you play, let's say six, seven songs an hour versus the traditional twelve to fourteen. You can save the morning drive. Don't play any secondary. Only give me the primary. Exactly. And you see immediately the demand chains. Someone can say that you know this is still not my program strategy because my program strategy says that I want to play seventy percent Nate uh, primary and thirty percent secondary how do i do that mm -hmm. that's very simple if you go on the goals balance we have we have a very unique settings setting for the content that's why i'm still saying content 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 mm -hmm. it's so actually you should always declare as content something that has to do with your program strategy this can be primary secondary or this can be language for example if you have a radio station in france there are rules saying that you need to play 30 percent music has to be french that means that your primary strategy is to make sure the station plays 30% French and 70% international. This is all this is all coming from your content. This is a very powerful tool here. This actually here allows you to not only define the strategy of the station, but also limit it. For example, I can say here that my uh, my station should always play uh, all day. Should play. You can also limit it by hour. You know, mm -hmm. it's crazy. I can say that from 1 a.m. to 1 a.m., I want to be sure that my primary, my primary songs, and I can do it even with time percentage. I can tell you, know, from the 60 minutes, the 30% of those 60 minutes has to be that or whatever. You know, you can even restrict it with time. On my example here, I will do it just with percentage. I can say here, you know, that my primary song should be at least uh, 65 and should mm -hmm. be maximum 75. So here, boom, I created for 1 a.m. between 12 and 1 a.m. I create a very strict condition that the system will try to bring the balances. Keep in mind, this the content uh, goal will never unschedule a song for you. That means, for example, at 1 a.m., I just requested uh, 75, 65%, 75% to be primary. But imagine that you have a clock that has no song to pick, that no song has uh, a content tag as primary. That means the system, it will keep scheduling everything because it can't leave unscheduled positions. So keep in mind, whenever you use this setting, make sure you have enough songs. Just just try put a restriction. You have actually zero songs because it's not going to work, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Right, uh, sense, Alexis. I'm just checking here. Alexis, Stefan, all makes sense, right, guys? Questions for John? Feel free to chime in. Sure, guys. Like, bring all the questions here. We have we have answers <laughs> for everything. Uh, this is this is the first thing. This is actually the fine tuning. Uh, someone can say, "Okay, John, everything sounds good, but my scheduler just dropped me back to back to secondary songs." And this is where the legacy rules come. What I usually say: goal idea of goal scheduling is amazing, but if you want to draw a line, you can always set uh, the rules. You know, as, as the safety net, like as a red line, you say that, you know what, Gis Electro, play with all the goals, but never go under this line. Because why Gis Electro can, can, you know, violate this, can go like and play, for example, two songs back to back, because maybe you don't have enough songs on the, on the category. Maybe you haven't marked the songs properly, whatever. Like goals will never leave an unscheduled position. And here is that you can play around. You can say, you know what, 
uh, let's create a new like uh, priority list. I'm okay. gonna name it one. So here, for example, we have like all the nice uh, goals saying, you know what, uh, spread the day part, uh, spread the songs, but I can still create, for example, uh, a segue band and say, you know what, guy, uh, on my content, I'm gonna create here a band. Secondary, secondary. And, uh, Exactly. I can say that never play two secondary songs back to back. And, you know, you can make this Sego band unbreakable. Uh, and here I have like, don't play two secondary songs back to back. And you know what? You can play oh. with the goals and your system will never violate. And, you know, just for fun. I'm gonna schedule a day before you before you schedule up. I was say, ah, I got you. Here we're <laughs> this. I, I was trying to get you in a question here because I know uh, Sadar has got a question. Sure. So let's do um, here. Let's answer his question first. Here you go, John. If you can see this on the screen, but we have essentially a couple categories in the clocks which are assigned to all day parts. Is it possible to see its balance across all day parts instead of going to each day part separately? And yes, you can totally do that, right? Sure. So if you go, go ahead, John. So yeah, if I go on my on my screen here, I have a button that says cross day part analysis, and here you can show me exactly what's what's happening. Uh, between all day parts and, and now, by the way use that drop down arrow on the top right because me personally i usually take out overnights um and pending nights of what kind of uh, mood i'm in to analyze but mm -hmm. you know obviously if you have special day parts in there that comes into play so john do me a favor just go ahead and uh, do, go back to the cross day part analysis and go to the sure. drop down on the right and it's a little far far right so you can pick your day part oh uh, yeah sure yeah so you can see that that arrow there on the right hand side star so what you have here is essentially you can take them in and out. So for example, for me, usually overnights, I just kind of take out because they're overnights, right? Mm -hmm. But you might also have a rogue day part, like a Saturday night specialty show. You don't want that number to mess up your overall generic rotations. That's so true. you have that drop down and take it out as well. Uh, the other option you have, like there are station, oh, sorry, uh, uh, there are stations that actually says, you know what, I never touch my day parts. Whatever plays a day, plays a night. Mm -hmm. We have always the option to Copy the day to, to copy, so you can always say that I can copy my my day parts to another day part, or actually even have option to group the day parts. But I think this is another discussion. But yeah, the question is that yeah, you can uh, you can do it all together. You can see all the day parts together. Uh, it's it's really flexible right now. Um, awesome, Houston. Thank you. So thank you. Great question, by the way. And John, before I forget, I want to show one more thing. Go back to your priority list for a second. Sure. You might notice if you're looking at John's screen here. I'm sorry, right, something got here. something got frozen here. Okay, I'm done. So if you notice that that segue band at the top, it might look slightly different than what you're normally used to. Um, I highly encourage users to enable this setting. There's an option in your setup, John, to split. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, I have I have different settings here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, no, 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 no. It's good. I love this. So we the whole point of these RCS lives give you kind of tips and tricks, right? And of course, there are things that we know, strategies and scheduling techniques. And I love, love, love enabling this setting. It's the uh, splitting up the segue bands. And don't forget, even though you have all the text here, you can just click anywhere in the text. It will still enable or disable those check boxes um also yeah, something it's yeah it's here it's on the advance because here's where we control the goals uh some people right, ask hello, also yeah. while we are here many mm -hmm. people say how okay i really don't like my screen resolution guys i'm so sorry but i have a 32 <laughs> inches screen and i'm really blind i have like eye problems so everything is huge on my screen um so uh, people ask like uh like how can i remove like the, the priorities and like you can always check this box here uh actually if you check it i'm sorry if you check it you can remove all the priorities that have a star and we give them by default and you can change them uh here's what nate was saying you can separate your bands you can not you, you just can you can have like all the segway bands independent on the priority list so you can have different weighting or you can say it's a uh, breakable or breakable uh there are many options here if you don't know what they do you can always hit the F1. magic button the f1 the f1 I will give you helped. everything all the it, it even is if, if it's going to give you examples what things do like we always mm -hmm. have like screen captures and everything or if you are more interested in more information you can always call rcs or nate directly That's and right. <laughs> ask him for oh, more shout out to Teresa on those i always tell her those 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 f1 dynamic help guides are <laughs> phenomenal this is such a resource for you um uh, don't hesitate to use that 
what I also really like here uh, it's that the optimization options, but this is something for another call because I think if we open the the magic box of optimization, Sorry, that was think, my dad. <laughs> I think it will take probably two hours more to talk about yeah. that. So, uh, but just just to wrap up that point there, the reason why you enable that segue band setting is very very simply put, the default setting is you essentially say if I have a content segue band, it's across the board. All of them are either unbreakable or breakable. But you and I both know that there's different types of you know scenarios. So, for example, using your content, right? Because as Aaron has said it, it's all about the content. And so uh, essentially what we have here is we have essentially a split, right? If I have, let's say, it's okay to play a primary into a primary. That's probably okay. But let's say it's a primary, primary into a primary, three primaries row. You might say, eh, based on what I want to happen, that's not okay. There is a solution for that. There is a solution for that too. You see, I'm smiling because I like oh, good. the solution. Please, go ahead. That phase, you know, means there is, a, <laughs> there is a solution for everything. So if you don't like the idea of Seco Bands that because it's too hard, you can always go to the attributes. Let's go back to the primary, secondary. Mm -hmm. uh, you can even give a minimum separation for the attribute. So I can say that, you know what, uh, my app, my songs are out of three minutes. That means if I say that, you know, Keep uh, keep it ten minutes uh, apart from uh, from uh, from one secondary to the other. That means it's almost three songs apart. Mm -hmm. So you can always play and draw lines everywhere in the software. Good point. Very good point. Um, this is as I mentioned before. As I mentioned before, Nate, this is like an extreme scenario that we decide to dump all the songs in one category. But if you ask me about other solutions, I can tell you most of the stations they separate the categories based on year and if it's a primary or secondary. Like my golds mm -hmm. are 80s, 90s, zeros probably nowadays. You can dump everything in one category. You don't need to have like primary 80s, secondary 80s, primary 90s, secondary 90s, primary zero, secondary zeros. It's very simple. You can dump everything in one category, call them primary golds and then secondary golds, and very simple adjust the year. Say, you know what, I want to have, I don't I play like too many 90s together, too many 80s together. You can then go ahead and play with a year. It doesn't mean you have to do the primary, secondary. The goals concept is everywhere you think that you want to group something, that something for you, it's only one big picture that you don't like to touch. For example, when I was a programmer, I never want to play with a goal. You know, I really hate the separation because when you have, for example, a hard AC station, you separate the, like the, the years, you end up creating too many clocks. So you make sure that you don't have a 90s at the same place every hour. This is grouping. It's all about grouping all the songs and let the system decide the positions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, we have a. Uh, I, I see you, uh, McGart. I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly. It's the Irish gal. Um, I see your question. She's got a link question. I want to save that. I want to finish up some of this content first. So if you give me a couple minutes, we will get back to your linker question in just a second. Um, so this is this is the big picture about goals. Like we should think about goals as the idea of grouping stuff. I'm talking about the goal actually scheduling grouping stuff and then the system decide because I, I I really remind you guys out there the more you restrict the system the harder the scheduling gonna be not for the system for you the system can handle any kind of scheduling before I was trying I was scheduling 500 stations at once and this level performed just fine the, the the trick here is that it's it's your how 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 more K or how much you want to juggle and replace songs in the hour mm -hmm. the more freedom you give the system the for me the better results you get. Like try to group things that you anyhow. I, I remember myself. I, I used to violate the 80s and the 90s. Like when the 80s didn't match, I will replace. K, I will change the category with the song with a 90, or I will juggle between uh, between positions when it was a gold song. You know. Yeah. And, and again, what I like to do personally is when I look at you know what I want to what I want to happen that transition right. What I like to do is, as John was saying, let G Selector have some flexibility. Um, and you might have a couple of those. I always use the example Sunglasses at Night by Corey Hart because that's a, that song where it's the one-hit wonder. It's a medium, uh, middle of the road. It's a safe song for your, your classic format. And it usually gets a little extra love because it's got nothing to, to battle with. If you have a classic hit station and you're playing Fluid Mac, uh, Billy Joel and all of that and the Eagles, yeah, there's a lot of music there in that weighted library. And so what I do is either A, you can always downshift that in the goals tab if you wanted to. But 
The other option is I start then tweaking, right? So the idea is that you let G selector do everything and then you start just slowly, just ever so slowly going to be a little more concise of what you want it to do. That can be, of course, either a search depth in the category or as John was showing in the content, defining more content or using the minimum separation in the goals tab. A lot of options there for you as well. That's correct. Um, uh, here, let's, get, let's get to um, uh, let's get questions. questions. Yeah. yeah. So this is in the links category. If you have several links with different voices that you want to schedule evenly, but you want to separate that voice and talent so it's not scheduling the same voice one after another. Uh, great question. And by the way, you can apply this, what we're doing now, to that primary and secondary content. You can do the same thing with links. So, I mean, exactly. me personally, yeah, me personally, I would do something. I don't know if I would do content. I don't know what feel. What, go ahead, John. You say first. I, I'm, go ahead. First, uh, can I reply to the question? So, you want, uh, I really like the, I mean, this equation I really liked and the problem I had B2 uh, back then, you have like a male and a female voice. Um, so, you want to separate the voice talent, so scheduling the same voice. So what is the face? So wait, let's think about it. What is mm -hmm. a voice for a link? It's the artist. You can always assign artists on, on a link if you want. For example, if I go here, we have a very nice male voice on this here. Yeah. I can say, I can go and add actually something on this. I can say that all participants, I can say that I have a vocalist, like no, a Nate. vocalist. I can say this is Nate. Yeah. So Nate spoke, Nate talked on this on this link, and then the same way I can go to my link goals, and on my priorities I can go and add a rule, spread or vocalist. I can go I can go spread and say vocalist. spread spread vocalist and say, you know what? See Nate, see John, see like Susan. I don't know who's who the the other vocalist, and then the system will automatically spread. You can do this the same. Uh, for example, you don't want to play uh, rock rock jingles all the time you don't want to play you know uh rock sweepers or sweepers with eff effects and everything you can do the same you can really easily uh mark your your links the same way and you can have also goals for the links for example i can say you know what uh nate it's too bad for my morning show so kill it no nate in the morning show we don't like him <laughs> so just, again look at the control here though look at the control and notice how john is identifying what he wants to do and with g selector this is all about what you want to happen right for other schedulers it's like don't do this don't do this don't do this but with g selector we want to start having the mindset of i want you to do this exactly right so, so I just want to say a mistake I did. So you see, guys, if I was on default and I go on my vocalist pff, cycles, you know why? Because this, the clocks I have on the default grid, they have no links. Mm. So that means there is no links request. So if I go to my no commercials grid that has clocks with links, pop, I suddenly see here my adjustments. It's just a tip for what we discussed in the beginning of the video, what happens when uh, our database is not coded properly. The same example here, I have only one link that has Nate's name, but I have 29 more links that they have nothing, they're not coded. So the system here cannot do magic. It will tell you that, you know, the demand for uh, uh, Nate is very low because yep. my links are not coded properly. So make sure when you do anything related to, to to goals, make sure that you uh, you you tag and you code your songs or your links properly. Couple options for you, just so you know, in case you're let's say seeing all this, you're like, wow, I want to implement all of this, but I know that it's crazy busy this week, and I might not be able to get to it to two weeks. Even then, I might you know take some time. I don't want to affect my on air schedule. Just so you know, you can always either a create an off air station and play with it. You can create a test database if you want to, and just cycle between both databases. Um, there's a lot of flexibility here. If you have any questions on how to have, let's say, a, a side kind of you know database, something like that, always call support. It's part of your kind of, it's free. It's just an off-air license, whatever it is. Very, very simple, very common. But just know if you want to play with this, um, maybe start going back to that content John was saying earlier. You can go by hours. Maybe take your overnights by itself, isolate your overnights and start implementing content scheduling during your overnight hours. Exactly. Remember, you can, you can do that by simply just defining a priority list for overnight and only assigning those categories during the overnight. That's all you have to do. That's cool. Uh, uh, 
I think hey, we I got one, more, I got one question here too, but let's start, let's try to start kind of, we got 45 minutes. Let's try to start wrapping this up a little bit. So if you have questions, let's get the last minute questions in for John. And again, thank you so much for the time today, John. John's our assistant G selector product manager. He knows everything in the in and out of G selector. <laughs> I love picking his brain because he's got a great interpretation of just not only programming and scheduling, but he knows exactly, as you can see, use the vocalist for links. Uh, so, Rich, yeah, go ahead. Browse list. Of course we use browse list, but for what do you want to go? The question is that why you want to use browse list? If you ask me, my my favorite implementation of browse list is the is the weekly top 20 of the station. So <laughs> what I used to do like uh, as a programmer back then, uh can be shuffled. Of course it can be shuffled. Like let, let's grab like because first of all, okay, let's go one at a time because I have this problem jumping from one topic to the other. First of all, you can create a browse list based on anything. I used to create a browse list based on my total place of a song. But if I create a browse list here, you know, I have like my top 20. Okay. I can always tell the system that what I usually do, I double click. The, the point you double click the browse list is the point the browse list will start playing, start reading the list. So in my case, I have to do it backward because it's going to read backwards the list, okay? <laughs> um, and of course, my ca my counter, it's a bookmark or count up or count down. I can even let the system do the, the, the count up or count down. I'm usually doing a bookmark. I like to say the system from where it's going to start when it starts scheduling. Uh, they have the option to stop, to repeat, but let's not go to our friend's question. Why, why, why you want to shuffle? A browse list that's the, that's the good question right i mean it's always about what what's what's your planning strategy because i i know in alternative formats they have the uh the uh what's his name in uh, the west coast was jed the fish that had the whatever aaron aaron will know we just talked this beforehand um the uh out of order right top 20 countdown out of order alternative classic rock whatever you want to be that's one example there's one example. Oh, really? I had no idea that you could that there are, there are things like that. Okay. Uh, Either you know way, I mean? you can do shuffle with that four. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that, I'm, I'm, that's that's just, I, I, was just, I was just curious because I, I, I'm going to tell you here a bit more. When you're on a browse list and you right click, you can do many stuff. Like you can uh, you can actually kick. You can see uh, the current. You can kick the current row in the back. So you can say, you know what? You go up down here. Go to the end. You have the option to do a shorting by artist on the list. And also you can have the option to go pop and shuffle my whole list. So each time you right click, you just shuffle the list. It was just it was just interesting. I'm sorry, I was trying to understand why you want to shuffle, but of course you can shuffle. I was just trying to understand if we can do it in another way in G Selector. Other but, examples to the browse list. Anybody just show where that browse list icon is located. That little blue paper with the pencil. It's for the fifth icon from the right, just in case anybody is, is tuning in. They don't know where that browse yeah, list is it's here. right there. Um, and of course, you can save it and filter by browse lists. Other examples, A to Z weekends, you can go and grab your entire database, click on the header artist, and you can sort A to Z. Again, as John was saying, double click to do the bookmark. That's on there too. Um, yeah. A lot of options. A to Z weekend, theme weekends, uh, top five at five. You can organize your, your database that way, as John was saying. Uh, Let's not talk top about top five at five because uh, the, I want to have like a full show only for charts. Because right now, with the option of having the flex clocks, let's take it one. You have the flex uh, clocks. Oh, that's right. Uh, okay. Well, What's the yeah. one concept? Wait, wait. And then you have also the option to have uh, the local blocks. You know what? Top five can be a brand new Facebook Live. So let's leave it for the future. Just to start <laughs> with time based clocks, uh, your local uh, blo uh, blocks for a second there. Go back sure. to your points. Just a brief oh, story. Just verbally talk about it. Your local blocks. What am, what, what am I doing? What, what am I doing? My screen's probably yeah. way too big. And so, so what we do, we have here is essentially just a way of think of this as a spot block with ways to have a on off, right? And the idea there is you're saying start this local block, play everything in order, stop it, then return back to your programming. So your local block could be top five at five. You just put songs one, two, three, four, five, which by the way could be in a browse list. Or it could be the actual elements themselves, and then boom, you're good to go. So it can be many. Way. It can be many things. It can be a top five. It can be your news. Maybe you're using using three different beds and buildings and voice track slots. Local blocks is super far, powerful. It's actually a small clock inside the main clock. 
Yeah. But this needs a lot of discussion. And I think or you can we are... just go check out our G Selector 490 new features in there. We talk about G Selector yep. Flex Box and how you can have essentially just one 15 minute clock with five songs in it. You call your top five at five, you play it Monday through Friday at five o'clock, and you're done. done. You <laughs> Right. So the uh, main, so closing, I want to say that the main concept of G Selector is to make your life easier. So we don't, we uh, something I want to make sure because we had a lot of fun in this one hour here. We're not trying to push you in any direction. Like you can always go use like legacy rules and everything. We're just saying that with G Selector, you can always do your work in a different way. Is easier. You can make your life easier. It's up to you. It's it's a decision. And Rich was just saying he's calling for one or two uh, positions in an hour. So what he would do there is in his clock structure. Yeah. <laughs> so many <laughs> options. It was, so just so you know, what you can do there is uh, one of the things that I also was talking about is, you know, you have those positions in the clock structure, right? You can kind of say, call it a spike position or a, a rich special sauce position. I kind of call it a couple of times. It's, it's your magic, right? It's your music philosophy applied in there. Uh, one of the things I was also kind of talking with um, with Stan and support was talking about having uh, rolling clocks, right? When you'd use rolling clocks, but in a non-traditional sense, you could go and just do a rolling clock of just nothing but spike categories, uh, random elements that you just want to incorporate here and there, maybe a, a whatever weekend or something like that, right? Some kind of fun, you know, just a summer song weekend and just there are a bunch of summer songs, something along those lines. And you could put a rolling position in your clock structure if you wanted to. And then, Rich, then you can start talking to John and you'll, yes, your head will hurt, but it's in a good way because it's supposed to give you nothing but ideas. And remember, the whole point of this conversation, as John was saying, G Selector is supposed to make your life easier. If you find yourself fighting with your G Selector, you're probably not doing something right. And it's not your fault. It could be just something you're not, you're missing or whatever. Do not hesitate to call RCS support. If you have G Selector, you have a support contract. It's why we're here. It's not like going with tails in your legs and saying, I give up. I, I couldn't figure it out. No, 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 no. The purpose of these RCS lives and RCS support is because how do you know how to do something if no one told you how to do it? Exactly. No. Call support. Email me or whatever it is. Ask your questions on the RCS live. And Rich, instead of saying like, okay, um, you know, tell me about browse lists, right? Well, as you can see, we can tell you all about browse lists. The question becomes is, what are you trying to achieve, Rich? Exactly. Are you saying that, hey, I have too many of these songs in my clock structure. I want to sprinkle in these elements. How would I do it? How would you do that? And again, looking at what John, John's logic and how it applies to G Selector, right? I know here in the States, the traditional approach is having all these categories. They're very specific. But John was saying, Forget the categories. Keep that simple. Focus on the attribute scheduling. Go to content and say you're a primary song, secondary, filler song. Um, use those segue bands or minimum separation, right? It's a different way of thinking how to schedule, but it's a really, really efficient way. And you don't have to apply it to your entire database. You can apply it to just you know one, tech, um, one scheduling technique, to one type of category, or That's maybe right. just whatever era, whatever your format is. That's right. That's absolutely right. Um, and what I want to say also, it's um, don't forget that we have we have many many uh, approaches for 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 each of your problems here. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a nice comment. Yeah, Donna does a great job. I agree. Um, in 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 the G Select world, what we try to, to to tell people to do is that when you when you make everything so strict, when you put your strict rules and get your five unscheduled position an hour. At the end, it's time you hit K. You, by yourself, violate something. Think about what's the thing you violate and convert it to a goal. It's very simple. I know I know someone that has like a strict 10 hours, 35 minutes minimum separation. But buddy, when you, most of the times when you hit K, the song is going to play within seven hours. So that means maybe your minimum separation is not exactly what you want. It's not actually 10. But why not let the system play around? There are many, many, many ways. What I keep telling people, when you when you get your unscheduled position and you hit K to replace a song, what's the first thing you're gonna break? Why? Why are you doing that? Yeah. And it's not a wrong it's not a wrong why. It's not the wrong why. It's just ask yourself why you do that. Yeah. And if you say, Well, oh, I don't like this transition, why don't you like that transition? Ooh, I like this song better. <laughs> why do you like that song better? 
right? Yeah, if and you like that song better, heard. probably it's going to should play more. Okay, I'll give my last tip because I know <laughs> this thing can go last really questions. All right, Rich and, and uh, Chris. If you have any questions, get your last questions in there. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna say something that I'm gonna, I wanna make some people smile. Uh, most of the programmers here are like CHR hot AC. You know, our top category is our ace. I have seven A's. Wow, I have seven A song. Let's go here to the goals. Let's go. To, oh, sorry, guys. Uh, let's go to my songs. Let's go to my attributes and let's go. Cat okay, see here, I have seven songs. Mm -hmm. Great. And if I go on my songs by themselves, I have all of my A songs playing, blah, blah, blah. People that are doing research, they know pretty good that from those seven songs, probably one, two, maximum three songs are the best. But they are forced to play all the seven songs, give them the same place because they have no other option. What do you do in this case? It's very simple. Memories came back with whatever score. It's the, my best song. Why should I sacrifice my category? Shift it. Make it play mm -hmm. 10 times more because it's your favorite song of your listeners. The, the Lose to Love Me from Selena Gomez is my, my secondary best song. Give it five times more plays than the other ace. You can even adjust what is even on your ace. Why you need to sacrifice and play bad songs or not so good songs just because you need to make the number of the category being equal, being always seven. Mm -hmm. Shift them. Make, make them play, play a little bit more. The system will automatically give more plays to the memories right now and will take out uh, plays from the other songs that are in the category A in this case. This is my and last tip of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And remind me, John. So, for example, like songs like Driver's License or, for example, Billie Eilish comes out with a new song. Obviously, that's a very – it's a social trend. You want to hit that a little bit more than, let's say, a traditional you know, power record, so to speak. Um, the two things I want to ask you, John, and, and remind me. If you have disabled and slotted for your powers, now obviously it's that's over. able to shift. It, it, it doesn't care about the shift. If you have a little bit of flexibility, right? The idea here is that if you have something, let's say driver's license, that is a cultural phenomenon, it doesn't matter, right? Some of those rules, like it played in the same hour the day before, sometimes have a little wiggle room, right? It comes to a gray area because you would rather, you know, bang driver's license than another weaker power just because exactly. it fits the rotation. Uh, you could do for this one, two, three week span that, you know, you have driver's license in your library. You can go to um, just the kick. You can incorporate the spread goals with a generic kick, right? Because then that would take into account the shift. Exactly. But so if you go to the goals categories and just show that one, two down arrow category group settings icon. Sure. You can change you can all the settings from here. Now, and my A's, my A's, you see, I have them scheduled. Why? Yep. Because I can get the same results. Uh, if you, I'll give you a, a small trick. If you do your ace with a very tiny priority list, like only minimum separation, but the bare minimum, because even the slotted, it will never follow your two and a half hours if the songs are up and down. Sometimes they're going to play at two hours. If you do with your main minimum, bare minimum of minimum separation and optimize the category, it's going to work pretty good, maybe yeah. better than slotted. Yep, but probably we should talk about optimizer and other Facebook Live. Yeah, and just go to the, go to the uh, the stacking. Just show them where that kick is. Sure. So first of all, I have to make it here from day part. I have to make kick. So in this case, the system is gonna respect uh, the, 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 the 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 bands, cool. the shifts, the goals, but also mm -hmm. it will it will try to follow your kick pattern you have here. Yeah. So you can see there again that pass order. You can essentially have kicks but you can still incorporate some goals into the mix as well. Yep. And the reason for that is just John was saying, sometimes you have a, though traditionally a balanced category, you might have based on social media trends, a unbiased, or you want to have one song with extra love. There's nothing wrong with for two weeks, take that category instead of disabled and slotted, make it scheduled and kick. Give that shift up a little extra love. Obviously, double check your turnovers and the analysis and all of that. But again, the idea there, the concept is that I want to play Driver's License more than, let's say, Maroon 5 Memories because it's a stronger song. They're both powers, but we all admit that that is a very powerful song, better than a Maroon 5 song in there. Exactly. Right. And uh, do, 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 yep, as Rich was saying here, so I'll give Rich saying I shift artists because our station has many songs by certain artists. Right. So in that goal based 
station, as I said before, in the classic hits with the Fleetwood Macs and the Eagles. Yeah, you might go into the goals, balance artists, and give that shift for those primary core artists, give them a little extra love. Or if you're like me, I like to define an actual attribute, uh, and I call them core artists or core songs. You've heard me say this numerous yeah. times, and then I have different rules applied to there, too, with those elements. So, all right, we hit exactly an hour. I'm doing the last three, two, one for questions. So if you have any questions in there, uh, let us know. If not, as always, you can go back and you can check out these videos over on our archive over at rcsworks.com, or you can show here the blog itself. So I'll have this blog up for you tomorrow, usually on Fridays when I get that blog in there, recapping everything. And what I'll do here too is I'll talk about some things that, um, that, that John and I have talked about. I'll show you where you can access those, right? So where's the browse list, library, you know, may, uh, library, browse, the blue piece of paper, the pencil, stuff like that. So, um, yes. And thank you, John, for joining us. This is thank fantastic. you, Nate. I love you guys here. This is getting some love here from, uh, from rich and all of that. Um, and of course, Aaron was asking if we're planning on always wearing the same exact shirt. We never plan anything. <laughs> I will I'll gladly call John beforehand and, and go from there. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So, John, thank you so much. Um, we'll check in a little bit, I guess. We'll think of some more G Selector stuff, and we'll be back next Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern time for RCS Live. And again, thank you, Sierra, as well, too. So have a great week, everybody. Be happy. Be healthy. Be safe. Get your vaccines. Wear your masks. All good stuff. Have a great one. Bye, guys. Bye.